recently i just finished stellar blade put a roughly 50 hours into the game before i finally beat it i went through what i believe to be one of the most <laughs> rough boss fights in the game or in gaming that i've experienced since the millennia boss fight in elden ring and i just wanted to give my thoughts on the game right now while everything is still fresh in my mind now, one of the things that I do want to say going forward is this video will contain heavy spoilers. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Some of the pros that I have for this game are like very simple. It's probably something that a lot of people who've played the game probably would express. The fluid combat system that the game has featuring combos, dodging, which can lead into perfect dodging, allowing you a little bit more wiggle room. Perfect deflects or deflects, which if you get a deflect that'll drain the shield, you get a kind of semi-perfect deflect. It won't drain the shield as much as well as you'll get like a nice little sound effect. But if you get the perfect deflect, it'll chip away at both the opponent's stats stagger meter allowing you to be able to get a retribution if you completely get their stagger down now they also have counter attacks for if you do a perfect deflect or perfect dodge which range from either holding down square or holding down triangle and it could chain into different attacks if you hit uh, triangle and circle at the same time it'll do something kind of crazy which will leave into big damage i think that system in itself is really really good but when it's paired as well with the beta skills that you get along and the burst skills that you get later on down the line after you defeat beat a certain someone it, it just gets really good which seems to be like the flavor nowadays with when, when it comes to like action adventure games or at least games of this ilk that's made by sony where you get like a quote unquote like enhanced mode of the character which either takes away the health bar and allows you to do let's just say damage in this particular case because like i ain't gonna lie that mode that you go with it, it seems like you might as well just stay inside like you know your normal mode and do damage and that mode is just for if you about to die and you don't have any more health pots or anything go in that mode and try to get off a little bit of chip damage so when you come out you could probably finish off like a boss or like some sort of minor enemy or something like that for the most part the combination of everything with the combat system makes it really stand out in my opinion because it gives it like that blend of bayonetta meets some people were saying Sekiro. i personally didn't see it except in the deflect system but the deflect system wasn't as i guess reactive as Sekiro's deflect system the game that mainly came to mind for me was metal gear rising bayonetta and the metal gear rising are the perfect parent now there are other systems that's in the game as well that i like i would like to include into the pros one being the stealth system of the game when you first start out trying to get off an assault or at least when you're on that main bridge when you're in i believe it's eidos uh seven when you jump down and you try to get that main attack on that robot that's like down bottom or maybe not robot but that nat but that's down at the bottom of the bridge it was like the perfect introduction into seeing how the assault move could work but when you go out into like the more broader more open landscape you don't really get the opportunity to really see it flourish <laughs> if that makes sense there was one case where i was completely behind one of the robots that was just out there walking around and it did a complete 180 turned its head on some exodus ish and just looked at me and started boom 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 boom, boom just busting at me which was crazy another thing that you could do after the assault skill though is the chain attack which allows you to get like a ton of damage onto an enemy so if it's like one of the smaller ones sometimes it'll be 75 percent of their health bar depending on the size of the enemy will determine the amount of damage that you do or at least that's what i noticed in my playthrough and with that i would say that does it for the stealth system one of the other things that i i would like to hint on is pretty much the difficulty of the game Throughout the course of the game, when you got new weapon cores, tumblers for you to upgrade your health pots, or uh, I believe it's Omni Bolts. I can't remember because I <laughs> I got uh, enough of them so goddamn going fast that I was able to upgrade my gear slots like as fast as possible. But one of the main things that I would say is the difficulty in the game, it doesn't seem to, I guess, scale with your damage, so to speak or with how hard the enemies were hitting you. I wasn't walking around butt, butt naked. I had clothes on, so maybe that's the difference there. But it seemed like it would take enemies roughly somewhere between 
five to six hits to kill Eve, regardless of how many beta cores I collected. Or in this particular case, I believe it's health cores that I collected, which increases Eve's health, health pool. It didn't seem as though like any of that mattered. It felt as though a lot of the attacks that were done to you were pretty much fixed. And just real quick, one of the cons that I have is something that happened towards the end of the game, the final boss fight, but I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna table that for now. Next, I wanna talk about the story of the game. Hear me, hear me now, hear me clearly. In my opinion, that's all this is. This is all opinion, baby. This ain't fact. This ain't fiction either. This is just my opinion. In my opinion, the story of the game is pretty well executed. I really like the concepts and the themes that the game tried to tackle, which a lot of games, a lot of manga, manhua, manhua, movies, television shows, and all that, they try to tackle these same themes, which is pretty much uh, one of the main themes of it is what it, what it means to be human. Another one of the themes is when the created becomes the creator. And another major one is the God complex of sentient and powerful entities and what happens to them once they realize they're more powerful than the things that created. So those were the main themes that I've seen this game try to tackle, and I thought that it handled it pretty well, especially when it came to the Mother Sphere and the Elder Natiba. I thought all of that came together really well. I would say my major issue, especially because the game was hinting heavily on some biblical themes with, you know, Adam and Eve, and then them two coming together and creating, you know, mankind, or in this particular case, a new form of man. I thought all of that was kind of, kind of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only reason is because like, why couldn't he do that with Raven? What was so special about Eve compared to Raven? I think that was like my major gripe with the story, just as a whole, once it got to that part and that's well like 90 90 percent into the game story that's when they toss that curveball at you with the whole he chose you and all that another thing that i think stella blade did really really well are the collectibles which can range to be outfits gear beta cores health cores the different materials that you would need in order for you to upgrade your character all of those things i think they handled it pretty well they tried to incorporate a lot of the shops into that collectible hunting which actually was pretty good except one of the major things that i thought was kind of funny with all of that was the currencies that they had in the game for you to acquire some of those things and i'll get into that in the cons and speaking of which let's go ahead and move on over to the cons some of the things that i didn't like about this game right now i can really only think of three one was what i had just mentioned which was the currency system i think that the game had too many currency systems and in that it kind of devalued a lot of the things that you could purchase or get into and what i mean by that is if you take a look at any other souls like right and and souls like you normally see two different types of currencies. One currency would be souls themselves, right? Or the thing that you could use to purchase something as well as level yourself up. The other thing you would see are those boss souls, which would be special currencies in order for you to purchase another thing. And then depending on which souls like your plan, there are varied other factions and all that, and then those factional currencies and all that, all right, whatever. That, that, that helps out in some cases with multiplayer and all that, but we ain't gonna get into that. In this particular case, right? Now you have, I believe it's roughly three different currencies, I believe, or it's two major ones, which is the Vita coins, as well as the gold, I believe is what they call it. I, I could be wrong on that. It could be called something else. But you have those two different currencies. One of those currencies can be used to purchase additional like gear related items, or in this particular case, like different type of things that can affect like your stats for, for Eve, or you could use it to purchase like new outfits, right? Well, with the gold, the gold is mostly used to purchase consumable related things. So like, you know, bullets, potions, sp uh initiators wb revivers and all that right now i think if they would have consolidated that as well as made money or the currency a little bit more scarce in the game so that it would have gave the money more value and made like the player actually have to choose what they wanted to get 
I think it would have made that portion of the game a little bit more compelling. But at at one point, it just became, well, y'all should have just gave me all of this because I was never running out of either one. <laughs> so it was just like, eh, I guess. The second thing that I didn't really like about the game, and I'm just going to go into this real quick. It was pretty much the difficulty spike tool at the very end of the game. Now, the ending that I went for was the one where I took Adam's hand and we formed, we became one. Now, I could go on a whole entire diatribe about like how I felt about that situation because i was really really pissed took me like about an hour to beat that boss but i was like seriously upset because it didn't feel like eve got stronger in that situation felt like she got weaker where bosses were previously like all right we gonna smack you like five six times and then you finally gonna go down right so it gives you a little bit of wiggle room for you to make some mistakes adjust to those mistakes and then you know go in in this particular case, no, 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 no. Number one, the boss is a rushdown artist. No, 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 no. You can't breathe. Suffocate. Number two, <laughs> the boss has a bunch of cheese moves, and you have to either perfect dodge or perfect period. And if you don't, if if you don't pick which one to do in the correct instance, it's wraps. It's game over. <laughs> Because like some of the attacks were either one shots or two shots. And this was me where I had five out of six of the health bonuses. The other thing was you pretty much had to beat the boss down. I want to say down below 60% of his health, which then triggers a cutscene that puts you in pretty much the new Eve slash Elder Natiba mode. And you just spam attacks before the timer goes down, right? Which... I thought was it was fine it was okay it, it wasn't it wasn't too bad but it was just that portion to getting him down to 60 percent the amount of damage that you did on top he had 15 piffs of stagger and the crazy thing is like with the i can't remember the name of the beta skills exactly but with the l1 circle beta skill the l1 uh circle beta skill was pretty much a knockdown for both when you were in the taki mode as well as the regular eve mode it'll be a knockdown and what, what what was the other thing when you do the stinger move I, I was calling it jackpot because it reminded me of devil may cry every time i did it um when you go in to do that move, that pretty much the, the third strike that you do with it, when you lunge at him, that's supposed to take away a pip of the stagometer. And it was kind of like, it was odd. It was like fighting against like one of the ladies, like Quiel or Sh Shal, or however you say her name, Shalalala, whatever her name is, her. It was like kind of fighting against one of them where like it will replenish or it felt as though it was replenishing given how the fight was going. So that was just like one of my main issues <laughs> with that. But other than that, the game was phenomenal. And as for my last con to this game, and this goes for any of you other developers out there that are making games. I mean, this from the bottom of my heart. Y'all should have learned this from back in the early 2000s when us gamers were complaining about it. If I am a goddamn Android and I'm falling out of the sky from orbit and I don't take damage, right? How does me falling three feet hurt? I don't understand it. I don't get what made y'all think, yeah, you know, you know what would be cool? You know, if she tripped over a rock and she broke her ankle, yeah, yeah, because her ankle's metallic. Oh, they based off of animantium and imagine animantium breaking. Like, I don't get it, bro. I don't. I don't. It was ruined in the way that I was playing the game. It, it made me question things that I could jump down from. Hold up. No, I just figured out a fourth one, too. The, the, the goddamn going great desert, yo. Whose idea was it? Whose idea was it to place a bunch of goddamn going quicksand traps everywhere inside of where you wanted to go? Whoever did that, man, I want to talk to you. <laughs> I want to talk to you. But back to the fall damage thing. I want to say that was like one of the most annoying things in the game that I think I experienced. Because there were times where I was taking fall damage where it looked like I shouldn't have took fall damage. 
Like, I mean, like, legitimately. I would be five feet off the ground. I would jump down and she'd be like, ah! And then I noticed that, like, a good chunk of my health was gone. And I was like, what the hell just happened to you? <laughs> I think that this is a game that is worth the price of admission, which is essentially the $69.99, depending on where you at, state tax applies, or if you're, like, somewhere else, like, in the world, depending on how those prices fluctuate. I think that it's worth it. But I wouldn't be surprised if people overlooked it. And it's primarily because of a lot of the news coverage that surrounded the game it seemed as though people was treating it as something that was more so meme worthy or a stance against the normal regime or whatever when <clears throat> the reality is it's a very solid game that is unapologetically early 2000s if i'm being completely honest and i loved every bit of it so if you guys want to check it out or if you checked it out let me know what you thought about it and if you like this video, please leave it a like. If you want to see more from this channel, please be sure to subscribe. I'll catch y'all all in the next one. Till then, deuces.